Hey everybody, welcome to Dad's Den. Picture it, 1982. I'm at the Boulevard Mall in Las Vegas, about 10 years old. The Sears at that mall had its toy section in the basement. And I'm down there. They also had their like uh, mail order catalog stuff. Uh, maybe my mom, my dad was messing with, with that kind of thing. But I go wandering in the toy section. And it was a huge toy section. It was really cool. And I come across the greatest thing my young eyes had ever seen. You see, growing up, maybe my two favorite toys from an early age uh, were Star Wars figures and little plastic army men. And in 1982, Hasbro released G.I. Joe, a real American hero. Essentially, like Star Wars figures and little plastic army men, had a baby. And I was hooked from the very beginning. These were everything I ever wanted in an action figure. I loved military stuff, army stuff. Watched war movies, watched Victory at Sea on Sundays, old you know, World War II Navy documentary. Man, these guys were absolutely perfect. And so, maybe over the next two years or so, I got a few of them for Christmas, for birthdays. From that first wave... I think I maybe got one or two things from the second wave. Uh, that was about it. Um, but it was kind of getting towards the end of my childhood. So I had a few G.I. Joes. I played with them for a little while. And eventually they got packed away. Well, fast forward about 35 years. And we're going through... The garage of my parents' house, cleaning stuff out because my dad was moving. And we find a box of toys. We open up the box, and there's the treasure of my youth. Now, in an early video that I did, I showed off some of the like Transformer type toys from my childhood. And I said at some point I was going to cover the G.I. Joes and the Star Wars figures. Today is the day for the G.I. Joes. So, I want to show off some of the figures that I actually had as a kid. These are toys that I owned since I was about 10 years old. So, they're, you know, in the nature of 40 years old. And uh, maybe talk about them a little bit. So, I want to start with, uh, with vehicles. Um, I didn't have a ton of vehicles for G.I. Joe. Um, we didn't. We didn't have that kind of money. Um, but I did have the Ram, the motorcycle. Unfortunately, somewhere along the line, the Gatling gun has been lost, but the motorcycle remains. Still has its stickers. Pretty good shape. Um, I didn't play super rough with these toys. Um, I think because... I was getting a little bit older when I got them. Still has a little gas, uh, with the, oh, the saddle pack, I guess it's called. And I believe, yeah, this is where the the the, uh, the Gatling gun would hook up to it. So I had the Ram. I got Flak, the cannon. And I thought this thing was cool. Moves up and down. These little things. I, you know, I don't even know why. They needed to make those things separate, but they did. Yeah, this was yeah, this is a cool one. I like that. I was just I was fascinated with military technology in those years, and I really appreciated um, the links they went in GI Joe to make things seem like they could be real, even if they weren't terribly realistic. In reality and so the other one that I have as I'm sort of putting it together here I don't remember how that went on this was jump the jetpack 
bit that came with Grand Slam. Also had the laser. Uh, I'm not sure if I still have the laser because we're going to open some of that up together. So that was about it for the sort of vehicle playset stuff. Didn't have very much of that, except one more. I did get one more. I got this, would have been probably in 83 or 84. And I have a feeling my parents probably partially bought it because you could use it as a carrying case. And that is the armored personnel carrier. Amphibious, and I think at some point I did probably float it in the water. And so I want to take you back a little bit to when we were opening that box with the toys in it. Because honestly, I didn't remember what had been saved from those years and what hadn't. Um, I, uh, I, I kind of thought that I'd maybe sold all the G.I. Joes off, like in a garage sale. I, I, I really didn't know. I was, I was kind of surprised to find this vehicle intact. Let's move the camera down a little bit here. It's a little easier to see it. But, um, so I brought this home. I was unpacking things uh, with, with my wife and my daughter. And um, so we opened this up. And we have all of these G.I. Joes and who at the time We're still sitting in their little seats. And it was sort of, it was sort of uh, eerie to me a little bit that these guys had been sitting for, I don't know, 35 years in their little, in their little truck. Kind of like the suburban equivalent of, uh, of the Terracotta Warriors of ancient China and sitting behind the wheel whoops hello two Cobra Commanders I don't remember why I have two Cobra Commanders I very distinctly remember collecting the flag points and sending in the mail thing to get Cobra Commander I might have done that twice I don't know so I'm going to take some of these guys out. Uh, I'm very hesitant to to really mess with them. Um, I'm going to, at some point, probably display them. At which point I will be um, moving their limbs. Let's see, let me take this strap out of here uh, without doing any damage. Maybe not. I think I can get around it. There we go. And I don't know. I might have. I might have lost a few along the way. And I see one that's got some damage. <clears throat> so let's take a look. Let's start off here with Cobra Commander, with one of my Cobra Commanders. That leg does not really want to move. So I'm not going to force it to. And these have gotten very weak over the years. A little bit of scuff on the mask there. But that was cool, man, when you got to order him. That was neat. I was, I was totally into that. Uh, okay, so let's see. Um, let's start with well, come on, let's start with everybody's favorite. We got, we got Snake Eyes, the Commando. Yeah, the Commando. He became a ninja later, and you know, that was like a real lucky break, I think, for, for Hasbro and Marvel, that, um, that the ninja craze became huge, and he was really easy to turn into a ninja so they could kind of jump on top of that trend with G.I. Joe. Um, 
But yeah, when you got him initially, he was a commando. He had an Uzi, no swords, just an Uzi. And uh, I think that's maybe all he had was, was the Uzi. But um, he was cool. I always liked Snake Eyes. Let's bring in the lady of that original wave. Scarlet. You know, kind of had a weird costume, but um, she was counterintelligence. I guess it made sense. We could, um, let's see. Didn't she have... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She had the, like, the shuriken on her glove. I remember that. And the famous crossbow. Let's get the most damaged guy out of here. Now, this is, this is Flash. He's the laser trooper. He has lost an arm. I gotta be honest, I don't remember him losing that arm, but um, it almost certainly happened. When I was a kid, it would if it was if it fell off in here, it would have still been sitting in here. Ooh, we didn't want to come out. We got Breaker, who is the communications guy. Whoops. Doing a great job here. There we go. Now his leg doesn't really want to move a whole lot. And dude, I'm with you. I don't really want to move your leg a whole lot. There we go. There we go. All right, the guy's staring at him angrily. Is um, this is Grunt, but this came with the Falcon uh, Hang Glider. Those were two of the later toys that I got the Falcon and the Viper. Um, they did not work for a crowd, frankly, but uh, there they were. This, who wow, he could be he could be Grunt's twin. Uh, this is Zap. Zap had the bazooka. Loved the bazooka. Let's see. Okay. This, I believe, is the Cobra Viper hang glider pilot. Because I think that was the only Cobra soldier I might have had. I might be wrong on that. Uh, again, we didn't have the kind of money where mom and dad would go out and buy you know five or six different cobra figures it's like no they all look the same and then i think this is the only one i had from the later waves this was doc i still remember i think i got him at maybe a like a grocery store toy aisle or something i do have doc's uh stretcher that he came with you can see it's missing part of the stretcher. Now, I got a few in here that are not G.I. Joe, but G.I. Joes were extraordinarily popular. There were a lot of knockoff brands. These two guys come from Rimco. I do not remember their names. They seem to move a lot better than the G.I. Joes do at this point, though. So, good for you, Rimco. And I, this guy also, um, I don't think is, is, is G.I. Joe, but he sure, he looks similar. He's a pretty good knockoff if he isn't. And I couldn't tell you in a hundred years who this guy was. I'd have to do some research. I don't even know the line he, get, he comes from. Uh, they did some Sergeant Rock toys. That might be what the Rimco ones are. That's, that's what has survived. Now, I definitely lost some or got rid of some along the way. Um, I had the original uh, Grunt character. He was my favorite. I always liked the guys who were sort of not flashy, kind of the solid guys who get stuff done. That's why in Star Trek I was a, always a Scotty fan. I know I had Stalker. Um, 
I know I had rock and roll. I loved that dude because he had the heavy machine gun. I know I had short fuse. And obviously I had Grand Slam because I have the um, the, the little playset that went with Grand Slam. So that was the that was the GI Joes that I managed to hold on to from childhood. I had a lot of good memories with those. Um, like I said, I was really into like army stuff. And oftentimes I had all the neighborhood kids, we'd be playing like these wars that would range over the whole neighborhood. Oh, we'd either have the plastic machine guns that made the noise or we'd have squirt guns and we'd be running around. Um, and so when these came out, it was natural to move to that, um, you know, from just kind of exclusively playing with Star Wars figures. It was, um, aside from maybe some of the Transformers, it was, it was like the last major toy line I think I had in childhood. Uh, never got into He-Man and the Masters of the Universe then. Um, I have a few behind me now because I have to admit as an adult, some of those He-Man figures, I just, I love the, I love the design that went into them. They're kind of nuts. Uh, but didn't have those as a kid. Although I can recall, uh, one year, um, a good friend of mine for Hanukkah, his grandparents bought him the entire initial run of he-Man, Castle Grey Skull, all the figures they released like in that first wave, Battle Cat, uh, the Panther. I can't remember what the Panther's name is. We'll call him Bob. Um, the whole, the whole line. And I remember going over to his house uh, and seeing them. And I wasn't much into like fantasy stuff at the time. But it was like it, it was overwhelming. It was like, holy, wow, this is everything. This is really cool. But at the same time, going, I'm not as impressed with these as I probably should be. It was one of those moments I think where you're going, ah, I think I'm, I think I'm growing up. <laughs> I should be way more impressed with all of these figures, with this cornucopia of toys, um, and, and I really wasn't. So we played with the G.I. Joes for a little while. I think they, they remained in as good a shape as they did, um, the ones that survived, because we didn't play uh, especially hard with them. Um, if, if we'd been younger, we probably would have damaged more. Um, so I got one more thing to show, though. Uh, this this is I would call it a sneak preview of Star Wars, but it's not really the point. Um, just as with G.I. Joe not having a lot of the vehicles. I didn't have a lot of vehicles for Star Wars either. Um, but we did get this one early on. This was probably the first vehicle that I got. Uh, I tested the batteries. Can't get any voices to come out of here. Um, still have the stickers on it. I'll show it off more when I do all the Star Wars figures. But, again, when, when, I, when I got that box of all the toys home and we pulled in, uh, pulled them out, you know, we're looking at all these things, and I pop open the back of this little troop carrier, and good lord, it was almost like something out of Silence of the Lambs, as uh, as G.I. Joe body parts spilled forth. So, at some point... Short Fuse uh, ran into some trouble. Short Fuse has looked better. And he, uh, I, I must have held on to him, uh, you know, for the purpose of fixing him. Now this, <laughs> here we have the lower legs. This was something I got when I was maybe five or six years old. Uh, one of my first favorite TV shows ever was SWAT. I was obsessed with SWAT. I would, I remember, I would like try to walk just on the furniture in our living room doing the SWAT like theme song. Da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da, you know, and you know, trying not to touch the ground. I, 
I have a distinct memory of that. And so they had this SWAT helicopter, which I think was repurposed from military toys. Um, and so the, it was blue helicopter. You had a, you had um, the pilot who you see has this um, hole in his ass. I know. Come on, don't be gross. Um, he he like sat on this you know peg, and then there was a gunner with like a heavy machine gun in the helicopter, which is why I think it was like a Vietnam era military toy that got turned into SWAT. Um, and when I think there was maybe something on it when you pushed pushed it, it would make the the gun go back and forth, and the other guy moved somehow, like he moved his body back and forth. I don't recall exactly. But what I got in here is essentially all of the G.I. Joe gear. You know what? And hey, thank goodness for that, right? Because jump online and go searching for equipment. Oh, hey, check it out. I also got Flash's arm. Let's see, is there a way I can do that without drawing? Yeah, there we go. There's a few of those pieces. So I have a great deal of the gear. I got a couple stands. Yeah, that's actually handy. I can probably use those. Let's see, I got... This is like a flamethrower. I wonder if this, this might have come with... Um, with one of the Rimco figures. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. This is like a some kind of heavy machine gun or auto cannon. I don't know if they were holding that. This is string tied to something. I haven't the foggiest. Oh, oh, cool. Okay, this, I think, whoa. Wow, did that just, I think I just, no, I guess it didn't break. Yeah, this is Breaker's communications gear, the headset. Well, that's awesome. I remember when these, when I first found these, like I said, I was absolutely dumb, dumbfounded. These were exactly everything I wanted. Uh, in toys at the time and um, and I'm only sad that I don't still have a few of them you know what we're going to be we're going to be collecting some of those uh, I'm going to get Stalker and I'm going to get those Gen 1 guys back is that on off switch ooh This thing might work after all. Something's shaking around in there too. This is the kind of fascinating content that I like to provide. Um, I think I'm going to recollect some of those. The, uh, just that first wave, the ones that I had. I don't know what would have happened to them. Um, well, they might have gotten sold, who knows. But. Um, I just remember when I first got these things, opened them up. The Star Wars figures that had previously been my favorite thing that ever existed, and maybe the greatest thing that ever could exist, they went down a peg. I mean, these guys had so much more articulation. They had all of this cool equipment and gear that they could hold. They had helmets that, um, that went on. Oh, now that's interesting. That looks more like the... I know, I'm getting caught up in nonsense here. Oh yeah, check out that. I think this is from one of the Rimco characters. It's like a belt. has a knife and stuff on it. Um, but with all, the, all this gear and equipment, and you could buy packs that had more of it in there. I think I did. I think that's where some of this came from. Um... You know, you had like check the you know this little helmet had the has the visor, and the visor, you know, goes up. 
it will it it blew Star Wars away. You know, and and especially in the early days where you you had the little data cards with everybody on them, and those should be around somewhere, but I have not been able to find them. Um, so you got a little biography of each of the characters. You had a code name and a real name. But other than that, you pretty much just had G.I. Joe versus Cobra the Enemy go out and play. Figure it out. Set these guys up, create ambushes, have Cobra doing something bad. Which usually, at the time, would be Cobra Commander and one guy. <laughs> that was the whole of Cobra. Um, you know, that's all they had working for him. And, and then G.I. Joe could gang up on him and beat him up, I guess. But... Um, yeah, so there we go. Um, so my original G.I. Joe is from 82, 83, right in that period. Missing a, missing a few. Short fuse needs to be put together. Flash needs his arm back. Rock and roll stalker, grunt. Need to rejoin the team. I guess they're out on special assignment. Kind of bugs me. It makes me wonder too. Were they somewhere else? I, who knows? When you when you're my age, eh, things accumulate, and you never know where they end up. But um, but here we go. This is so. This is Dad's did for today. GI Joe, real American hero, the first wave. My own personal toys that have managed to more or less survive the ages. Um, hey, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, share with your friends. Um, if you have any any memories yourself of G.I. Joe, um, of the characters that you had, what you enjoyed the most, hey, please put them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. It's, it's always fun to talk about that kind of stuff. I know that for me, the first birthday that I got G.I. Joe figures on was like, I think it was like the last day of school. I, we always got to open a present like that morning. Mom would let us open one present before school. And um, I don't know what it was. Maybe a couple of the figures. Maybe it was one of the one of these, you know, vehicles. But um, I went to school that day knowing that when that day was up, I was going home and I was playing with G.I. Joe's. And I was a happy kid. Last day of school and I got G.I. Joe's waiting for me. That was awesome. If you got any memories like that, put them in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. In the meantime, we're going to call it a day. Um, you know, God bless you. Be kind to one another. Have fun. And uh, what can I say? Yo, Joe.